Hello everyone, welcome to Perio Basics. In this video lecture, I'm going to talk about the alveolar bone. Now, alveolar bone is a very important component of periodontal apparatus. The final outcome, the ultimate outcome of periodontitis is the loss of alveolar bone. And whole our regenerative therapy is focused around a regeneration of this bone. So in this video, I'm going to talk about various anatomical and the physiological aspects of alveolar bone. So let's see what we have in this video. Now the alveolar bone. Alveolar bone is the specialized part of maxillary and mandibular bone which supports the teeth. Now the cell lines involved in the remodeling of alveolar bone include the pre-osteoblasts, osteoblasts, osteocytes, bone lining cells and osteoclasts. Now the alveolar bone consists of an outer cortical plate which is composed of haversian bone and compacted bone lamellae, a central spongiosa or the cancellous bone and the inner socket wall. Now the cortical plate and the bone lining the socket wall they meet at the alveolar crest. The bone lining the socket wall is referred to as bundle bone because it provides attachment to the principal fibers bundles of periodontal ligament. Now the osteogenesis. I have already explained the cell lines involved in osteogenesis. The growth factors that are involved in bone formation include transforming growth factor beta and bone morphogenetic proteins and many other factors. Cell markers which indicate osteogenic differentiation include osteocalcin, osteonectin, alkaline phosphate and bone sialoproteins. The bone formation occurs by two mechanisms. One is called the intramembranous bone formation and the other one is called as the endochondral bone formation. Now details of these two types of bone formations has been given in dental histology books. So you can go through the dental histology books and read about the intramembranous and endochondral bone formation. Now coming to the development of alveolar bone. As I've already spoken, the cells derived from the dental sac here, they differentiate into osteoblasts and they form the alveolar bone. Now the formation of alveolar bone takes place alongside the eruption of the teeth. Now the deciduous teeth, they erupt and they give rise to the alveolar bone. But when the permanent teeth, they are formed, they resolve the roots of the deciduous teeth and they occupy the alveolar socket. Now developing toothbuds of the maxilla and the mandible, they are surrounded by loose woven bone. With the development of the teeth, the, this bone is converted into the lamellated bone. Now here you can see the cross section of the mandible at molar region. Now this is the pulp chamber of the molar. Now this is the furcation area. Now this thin space that you can see here is the periodontal ligament space. Now this is the root apex. Now this lamellated thick bone that you can see here is the cortical bone. And this spongy bone inside the cortical plates is known as the cancellous bone. Now this is the inferior alveolar canal which provides the passage for inferior alveolar nerves and vessels and this is the lower border of the mandible. Now the alveolar bone is made up of two distinguishable parts the alveolar bone proper and the supporting alveolar bone. Now the alveolar bone proper is made up of thin lamellae of bone which surround the root. Now here you can see this thin cortical lamellated plate which surrounds the roots of the teeth is known as the alveolar bone proper. Now when seen on a radiograph, the alveolar bone proper appears as a radiopaque line known as lamina dura. Now the principal collagen fibers from periodontal ligament are inserted into this bone. Now because of insertion of these fibers, the alveolar bone proper is also known as bundle bone. The alveolar bone proper is perforated by many openings providing passage to blood vessels, lymphatics and nerves. Therefore, this bone is also known as cribriform plate. Now, the supporting alveolar bone is the remaining bone of the alveolar process except the alveolar bone proper. Now, in these figures, you can see dehiscence and this is the fenestration. Now, these are commonly found in alveolar bone. A dehiscence is the loss of alveolar bone on the facial, mostly on the facial aspect of the teeth that leaves a characteristic oval root exposed defect from cemento enamel junction apically. On the other hand, a fenestration is a circumscribed hole in the cortical plate 
over the root surface which does not communicate with the crestal margin. Now coming to the composition of allular bone. The allular bone is composed of 65% of inorganic and 35% of organic components. Now the principal inorganic ions present in bone are calcium and the phosphate ions. More than 90% of the organic component is composed of type 1 collagen with a minor component of type 5 collagen. Now coming on to the cellular components of the allular bone. Now osteoblasts, they are the bone forming cells which express parathyroid hormone receptors that have several important functions in bone remodeling including expression of osteoclastogenic factors producing the bone matrix proteins and the bone mineralization. Now osteoblasts, they secrete collagenous and non-collagenous matrix components of the bone matrix. They secrete matrix metalloproteinases and tissue inhibitors of matrix metalloproteinases. They also secrete many regulatory components which regulate the bone remodeling. Now, bone remodeling involves three important terminologies, the rank, the rankle and the osteoprotagrin. Now what are these three terminologies, rank, rankle and OPG? A detailed description of these three terminologies has been given in a separate chapter on osteomenology of periodontal diseases. You can read the chapter from the book or you can log on to the website and read the article on osteomenology from the website. Now coming on to the osteocytes. Now the osteocytes are the osteoblasts that get entrapped into the bone lacunae during bone deposition. Now these cells they comprise of more than 90% of the cells within the matrix of the bone. Now they form a network of cytoplasmic processes extending through the cylindrical canaliculi to the blood vessels and other osteocytes. Now the main function of these cells is to control the extracellular concentration of the calcium and phosphorus as well as in the adaptive remodeling behavior via cell to cell interactions in response to the local environment. The bone lining cells are the cells that cover the inactive or the non-remodeling bone surfaces. Now these cells have a flattened shape and they contain a few cellular organelles. Now the intracellular characteristics of these cells suggest that these cells are hardly engaged in any kind of bone formation or absorption. Now coming on to the functions of the allular bone. The primary function of allular bone is to hold the teeth firmly in position and to transfer the occlusal forces to the basal bone. Now this is the dynamic tissue and adapts to withstand the occlusal forces put on teeth. It provides vascular supply to periodontal ligament and cementum and it houses and protects the permanent teeth while supporting the deciduous teeth. So friends, this was the basic description regarding the allular bone. Now there are so many things to be explained regarding the alveolar bone, specifically in the regeneration of this bone. So I'll be discussing more about this bone in my lectures on the regenerative therapy. Everything that I discuss in my videos is available in my book Perio Basics. Now this book is available on my websites periobasics.com and socialpublications.co.in. A direct link to purchase this book through PayPal has been given in the description below. So this was all for today. I'll see you next time with some more videos. Thank you.